This video is going to explain to you population pyramids and sort of what they look like and how they're constructed. So basically we're going to look at population pyramids, we're going to look at how they tell us about birth rates, death rates, infant mortality and life expectancy which we learned about in one of the previous videos. We're going to be describe what a population pyramid is, we're going to be understand how it's constructed, how it shows birth rate, death rate, infant mortality life expectancy and how we can use these population pyramids to describe a country's population trends which sometimes comes up in the National 5 exam. So population pyramid is a special type of bar graph, eh, particularly for population and the structure of different age groups. They're used because they help countries plan for the future. Basically if they've got a lot of children they need to look at focus on building schools and so on. If they've got loads and loads of old people they need to then look at providing more care homes and look into pensions and all that. All right? And we split it into males and females so we can compare fairly easily. Russia, with the largest territory in the world, has roughly the same total population as Nigeria, a country one sixteenth its size. But this similarity won't last long. One of the populations is rapidly growing, while the other is slowly declining. What can this tell us about the two countries? Population statistics are some of the most important data social scientists and policy experts have to work with. But understanding a country's situation and making accurate predictions requires knowing not just the total size of the population, but its internal characteristics, such as age and gender distribution. So how can we keep track of all that data in a way that makes it easy to comprehend? Complex data is more easily interpreted through visualization. And one of the ways that demographers represent the internal distribution of a population is the population pyramid. Here, the data is divided by gender, with females on one side and males on the other. The population numbers are shown for each five-year age interval, starting from 0 to 4 and continuing up to 100 and up. These intervals are grouped together into pre-reproductive, 0 to 14, reproductive, 15 to 44, and post-reproductive years, 45 and up. Such a population pyramid can be a powerful predictor of future population trends. For example, Rwanda's population pyramid shows it to be a fast-growing country. With most of the population being in the youngest age groups at the bottom of the pyramid, the number will grow rapidly in the coming years. As today's children reach their reproductive years and have children of their own, the total population is almost certain to double within the next few decades. For our second example, let's look at Canada where most of the population is clustered around the middle of the graph. Because there are less people in the pre-reproductive age groups than there are in the reproductive ones, the population will grow more slowly as the number of people reaching their reproductive years decreases. Finally, let's look at Japan. Because the majority of its population is in its post-reproductive years and the number of people is smaller at each younger interval, this means that at current rates of reproduction, the population will begin to decline as fewer and fewer people reach reproductive age. Comparing these three population pyramids side by side shows us three different stages in the demographic transition as a country moves from a pre-industrial society to one with an industrial or post-industrial economy. Countries that have only recently begun the process of industrialization typically see an increase in life expectancy and a fall in child mortality rates as a result of improvements in medicine, sanitation, and food supply, while birth rates remain constant, leading to a population boom. Developing countries that are farther along in the industrialization process begin to see a fall in birth rates due to factors such as increased education and opportunities for women outside of child rearing, and a move from rural to urban living that makes having large families less economically advantageous. Finally, countries in advanced stages of industrialization reach a point where both birth and death rates are low, and the population remains stable or even begins to decline. Now let's take a look at the projected population pyramids for the same three countries in 2050. What do these tell us about the expected changes in each country's population? And what kinds of factors can alter the shape of these future pyramids? A population pyramid can be useful not only as a predictor of a country's future, but as a record of its past. Russia's population pyramid still bears the scars of World War II, which explains both the fewer numbers of elderly men compared to elderly women and the relatively sudden population increase as soldiers returned from the war 
and normal life resumed. China's population pyramid reflects the establishment of the one-child policy 35 years before, which prevented a population boom such as that of Rwanda, but also led to sex-selective abortions, resulting in more male children than female children. Finally, the pyramid for the United States shows the baby boom that followed World War II. As you can see, population pyramids tell us far more about a country than just a set of numbers by showing both where it's been and where it's headed within a single image. And in today's increasingly interconnected world facing issues such as food shortages, ecological threats, and economic disparities, it is increasingly important for both scientists and policymakers to have a rich and complex understanding of populations and the factors affecting them. So here is an example of a population pyramid from Kenya. You can see it's spun in male and females. Make sure that when you're looking at uh, population pyramids that you focus on this bit here. And we know that the units that we're measuring in, it's not just 3.2, 0 0.4 year olds, or 0 to 4 year olds, it's 3.2 million. And that's really, really important when we're looking at describing these uh, population pyramids. There we go, here's Scotland from 2011, linking into the census data that we managed to take. And you can see we've got like a bell-shaped curve, so there and there. And this middle area is where we have most of the population. Yep, and that sort of indicates when families are a wee bit larger, but now this generation, uh, we're not having as many kids due to the expense that we've seen in the, in the previous video. Again, Japan, it's another developed country, it's got that bell, bell shape to it, which indicates that they're having less children due to the, the economic uh, cost of having a kid. So, basically, a wee bit of background, another description of what they are and how they work. Yep, the shape talks about birth rate, death rate, yep, so if it has a wide base, yep, it shows you that it's a high birth rate, there's a lot of young people being born, yep. If the death rate is very, very thin, then a lot of people are dying. Obviously, it's the opposite. If the, the base of it is very thin, there's not many people being born. And if the sort of top end, the 85 to 100 section, has loads of people and it's really wide, it means not many people are dying. And that can link into healthcare and so on, which we looked at in uh, the previous video. So what I want you to do is describe the differences in both the graphs. So one of the differences you might want to notice is look at the amount of 0 to 4 year olds. Yep, particularly in Kenya here. Now look, Kenya is in millions and the one for Scotland is in thousands. So it's very, very crucial that we notice that so that when we're describing we can easily compare it. Now this makes it much more difficult to compare but as long as we're saying that there's more there's less, and we're given a few fingers and a few, a few figures and a few age groups, uh, we should be alright. Then what I want you to do is explain the difference in both graphs, linking back to the population growth video, where we're saying, why is there less young people here than here? Yep, why is there less old people here than here? What are the reasons for these population trends? Why do they look in the way they look? Yeah. Now, an assessment of all of the lessons we've covered so far in class and on these videos, including the population census stuff. Yep, so make a poster or a report. You can sort of do it any way you want. I want you to talk about density, distribution, population pyramids, population statistics, the census. I want you to use diagrams, give descriptions, see what the problems are, what solutions are there, and talk about Scotland's population from, obviously, the population pyramids that you've seen, and then also from what you can do and you can do your own research there. Yep. If you manage to get that finished, well done. A wee bit of extension work. The National 5 Geography course uh, course notes. There's some really good exam style questions in there. And they sit underneath the TV.